mind is time phenomena mind is a time oriented existence it is a phenomena of time think of mind as dew drops dew drops are very fragile just for the moment these dew drops exist comes the morning sun rises and dew drops evaporate come a little breeze and they slip and are gone so is the mind it knows nothing of reality knows nothing of eternity it is a time phenomena think of it as dew drops but you think of it as pearls and diamonds as if it is going to stay forever and you need not believe in buddha you just watch your mind it is not the same even for two consecutive moments it goes on changing continuously mind is flux one moment it is this another moment it is that one moment you are in deep love another moment you are in deep hate one moment you are so happy and another moment you are so unhappy just watch your mind one who is the attention of your life now one without whom the sun never rises and never set in your life next moment thing changes that person does not create any more ripples in your life that person is no more the center of attraction if you cling with this mind you will always remain in turmoil and you will never be able to remain in silence peace and harmony something or the other will go on happening and you will never be able to have any taste of eternity only the taste of eternity fulfills you time is constant change think of your mind as bubble like bubbles all mind experiences burst sooner or later and then nothing is left in the hands look at the soap bubbles you enjoy playing with them but they burst no sooner than they are created go after the mind it is a bubble and sometimes the bubble looks very beautiful in the sun rays it may look like a rainbow it may have all the colors of the rainbow and it looks really enchanting and majestic but go rushing for it catch hold of it and the moment you catch hold of it it is no longer there such is the nature of the mind and that is what happens every day in your life you go on running after this and that and the moment you catch hold of something it is no longer the same then all beauty is gone that beauty was only your imagination then all joy is gone that joy was only in your hope then all those ecstasies that you were thinking were going to happen do not happen again they were only in your imagination or only in the waiting reality is totally different than these bubbles of your imagination and they all burst failure frustrates you so does success success also frustrates ask the successful people poverty is frustrating so is richness ask the rich people everything good or bad is frustrating because all our mind bubbles but we go on chasing the bubbles not only chasing we want to make them bigger and bigger and real everyone wants to make every experience bigger 
mind is continuously thinking. Mind is like an American who is interested only in how to make things bigger, a bigger house, a bigger car. Everything has to be bigger and naturally the bigger the bubble becomes, the closer it comes to bursting. Small bubbles may float a little longer on the surface of the water. Bigger bubbles cannot even float that much. Hence, there is American frustration. Nobody is as frustrated as an American. The American mind has succeeded in making the bubbles big. Now it is bursting from all sides. Now there seems to be no possibility to protect or save it. It is exploding. And we are all following the American patterns of life. And nobody is at fault because everybody thinks it is our dearest desire and we have succeeded in it. Nothing feels like successes. Buddha says, think of mind as dream. It is imagination, subjective. And once all creation, you are the director, you are the actor, and you are the audience. All that goes on in your mind is your private imagination. The world has nothing to do with it. The existence has no obligation to fulfill it. A doctor has just finished giving a patient who was quite a bit more than middle-aged a thorough physical examination. I cannot find anything wrong with it, sir, the doctor said. However, I recommend you give up about half of your love life. The old man stared at the doctor for a moment and then said, Which half? Thinking about it or talking about it? Mind is insubstantial. Mind is either thinking or talking. It knows nothing of the real. The more mind you have, the less reality you will have. And the less mind you have, the more reality. The no mind knows what reality is. It is a complete absence of the mind and its phenomena. No mind knows what reality is. Then you become a Tathagat, one who has known the suchness, and who comes and goes, leaves no trace. Or think of the mind as a lightning flash, says Buddha. But never cling to it, because the moment you cling to it, you will create suffering for yourself. The lightning is only for a moment there, and then it is gone. Everything comes and goes. Nothing remains. But we go on clinging clinging to things in our memory and by clinging we, are, we go on creating misery for us. Watch your mind. How ready it is to cling to anything. How afraid the mind is of the failure. How afraid is the mind of the future and the change. It wants to make everything stable or permanent. It wants to cling to everything that happens. You are happy and you want this happiness to remain. You will cling with it. And the moment you cling, you have crushed it already and it is no more there. You have met a man, a woman, you are in love and you cling and you want this love to stay forever. All your energies are focused in making this love forever. In that very moment when you desire the love to stay forever, it has disappeared. It is no more. It is no longer there. 
All mind experiences are like lightning, they come and go. Therefore simply watch. There is not time enough to cling. You simply watch and take note, headache, headache, love, love, beauty, beauty, just take note. And that is enough. It is such a small moment that nothing more can be done. Take note and become aware. Awareness can become your eternity and nothing else. And the last thing Buddha says, think about the mind experience as cloud, changing forms and fluxes. You look at the cloud, sometimes the cloud is like an elephant and immediately it starts changing and becomes a camel or a house and into so many things. It goes on changing. It is never static. So many forms arise and disappear, but you are not worried. What does it matter to you whether the cloud looks like an elephant or it looks like a camel? It does not matter. It is just a cloud. So the mind is a cloud around your consciousness. Mind is a cloud around your consciousness. Your consciousness is the sky and mind is the cloud. Sometimes it is an anger cloud, other times it is a love cloud and another time it is a greed cloud. But these are various forms of energy, whether it is love, hate, anger, greed, jealousy, these are all crowds. Never choose or become attached to these. If you become attached with the elephant in the cloud, you will be miserable. Next time you will see that the elephant is gone and you will cry. But who is responsible? Is the cloud responsible? The cloud is simply following its nature. You just remember a cloud is there to change, so is the mind. It is never eternal, never permanent. Watch from your inner sky and let the clouds float. Be a watcher and remember clouds will come and go. You remain indifferent. Buddha has given indifference a great value and he calls this as upeksha, means indifference. Remain indifferent, it does not matter. Two astronauts, a man and a woman, were visiting the planet Mars, where they found the Martians very hospitable and eager to show them around. After a few days, the astronauts decided to pose a pressing question to their host. How is life reproduced on Mars? The Martian leader proceeded to take the astronaut to a laboratory where he showed them how it is done. First, he measured some white liquid into a tube then carefully sprinkled a brown powder on top, stirred the mixture and set it aside. In nine months, the astronauts were told the mixture would develop into a, a new Martian. Then it was the turn of the Martian to ask how life was reproduced on Earth. The astronaut, a bit embarrassed, eventually gathered courage to give a demonstration and began to make love. They were interrupted, however, by the hysterical laughter of the Martian. What is so funny? The astronauts inquired. That, replied the Martian leader, is how we make our Nescafe.
all forms one need not be worried about these forms just watch think of mind as stars a fault of vision as a lamp a mock show dew drops a bubble a dream a lightning flash cloud so should one view what is conditioned and then the conditioning disappears and you come to the unconditioned state that unconditioned state is suchness truth reality yathabhutam as it is yathabhutam means as it is but whenever we see things we try to impose our own imagination on it when we have a woman or a man we impose our own ideas on it this is simply imagination this is not yathabhutam we accept things as they are without any thinking and in that very moment the conditioning disappears and you come to the unconditioned state of your being bliss is the outcome of that